best boxing content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and punch that bell for notifications. Sports need rivalries. There always needs to be a villain. Someone or some group that a fan can point to and blame for all their hardships and misfortune. It transcends the sport. Rivalries can evolve based on history, proximity, and experiences. Baseball has the Red Sox and Yankees. Soccer has Dortmund and Bayern Munich. But with most things, boxing is a little different. And instead of a team or individual, the biggest rivals are Mexico and Puerto Rico. And the next installment is about to go down with the world title on the line. On April 24th, WBO World Featherweight champ Emmanuel Navarrete will make the first defense of his 126 pound title against Christopher Diaz. They will join a long line of Mexicans and Boricuas like Miguel Cotto and Antonio Margarito or Salvador Sanchez and Wilfredo Gomez to settle their nation's scores in the squared circle. While these two may not have personal beef, their heritage dictates a grudge match that has to be considered appointment television. El Vaquero is one of the sport's busiest fighters, let alone champions. In less than two years, the Pride of Mexico has fought eight times, won and defended a belt at 122 pounds, moved up, collected a strap in another division, and is poised to make his first defense. Keep in mind, this was all during a pandemic, when most fighters, especially champions, were sidelined. The man likes to stay busy and is wasting no time getting back into the ring to make his first defense against one of the sport's toughest contenders. Christopher Diaz, hailing from Berenquitas, Puerto Rico, has been in tough against some of boxing's best champions. Throughout his career, Diaz has experimented with his weight and finally settled on super featherweight for the first world title shot. It was against Masayuki Ito, a crafty, experienced fighter who got the better of Pitufo over 12 rounds. Not scared of anything, Diaz moved back down to featherweight where a man by the name of Shakur Stevenson welcomed him to the division. The Baruika took the future champion 10 rounds and proved yet again he can mix it up with some of the sweet science's best. Diaz knows all too well that greatness doesn't come easy. On September 20th, 2017, his childhood home had been destroyed by a hurricane. Everything Diaz does is for family, from taking on his late dad's nickname to moving his family to Orlando after the hurricane. The only motivation he needs to win is his family, saying that I have once again been given an opportunity to become a world champion. But there's something very different this time around. I will not fail. I will bring that much needed world title to Puerto Rico. If you like defense, this is not the fight for you. Instead, these two are defined by their busy all action styles that will lead to another great fight in the history of Mexico versus Puerto Rico. Navarrete will try to use his length to work the angles and find an opening inside to land those massive uppercuts. Diaz, on the other hand, used to fighting at a heavier weight, should use his size and short, quick punches to break down the champ. Neither man has been stopped in their careers, but if it goes down the way the paper reads, it'd be surprising for this to go the distance. Mexico versus Puerto Rico, outside versus inside fighter, champion versus contender. This fight has all the makings of a scrap for the history books and another building block in the legacy of two proud boxing nations. Emmanuel Navarrete can continue as one of the sport's busiest and dominant champs, while Diaz can finally make it over the championship hump and bring a world title back to his home country. Rivalries in boxing surpass the sport and instead pit nation against nation people against people, greats versus greats, and the end result is some of the best action boxing has to offer.